If you're under the impression that making money while playing solo is difficult, then well, I can't exactly blame you. Leveling up an emissary flag on your lonesome can be a lengthy endeavor, and it usually doesn't take long for a portal hopping reaper to come DPI glitching your way, in which case all of your work could be for naught. But let's be real, farming gold without an emissary flag? What is this, 2018? The benefit of that multiplier is simply too big to pass up on, but as long as we are rocking that thing atop our vessel, we are going to risk becoming a target. So what if I I told you that you can have all the benefits of an emissary flag, but none of the risk. Okay, granted, there always will be some amount of risk involved, but today I'm going to show you a foolproof way to make money in Sea of Thieves whilst keeping that risk as low as possible. Because, ladies and gentlemen, you can earn a fortune without even using your ship. Once you're done with the setup, to start off your day, you're gonna want to get your hands on a storage crate and as many supplies as you can afford. In my case, I was lucky to find one such crate already swimming in the water, meaning that organizing my supplies was gonna be a bit easier. Food to keep us alive and firebombs to take on AI enemies would both be hugely beneficial to our cause. Once you have exhausted the outpost of all the fruit and bombs you can find, you're gonna want to set sail towards any island in your general vicinity. Note that at this point we are not going to raise an emissary flag just yet. If we want to make money without using our ship, we would need a suitable replacement. And one such replacement can be found at pretty much any island if you're lucky, in the form of a rowboat. We want to make sure that our new vessel does not sustain any damage if we can help it, so before heading out on our adventure, we have to get rid of any old skeleton that might be around. And with a skelly captain defeated, we have also already found out how we are going to make money if flipping voyages on a ship is not an option. Because every skelly captain on a small island drops a map that has a chance to contain cursed treasure, we have a fairly easy way to acquire high value loot if given enough patience. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, not every map can be a winner. Don't be mistaken, nothing about this process is going to be efficient. If it's gold per hour you're looking to optimize, I'm afraid this is not for you. But if making sure you don't lose your treasure is your priority, you're going to like what's coming up. After another visit at an outpost to raise an emissary flag, we are going to sail straight for the edge of the map. Because not only does the northwest part of the Sea of East see very little traffic, in my experience anyway, but there's also a conveniently located rock that we can hide our ship behind. Now remember, you can level up an emissary flag simply by touching loot corresponding to your faction of choice. Yes, bringing it on your ship will give you yet another boost to that level, but it isn't actually necessary. So we can proceed to level up this flag without being anywhere near it, simply by taking our rowboat from island to island. It is time to embark on our epic adventure chat. Just you, I, and the rowboat. Oh yeah, this is also a first for the series. I was live streaming my first attempt at making money in this way, so in this particular solo adventure, you're gonna find me talking to myself a bit more than usual. Well, let's just say that my chat room shall henceforth be referred to as the voices in my head. Back to the task at hand, the voices and I were fairly lucky because the first island we visited gave us another item that could be useful for our journey, it being an ammo crate. With our preparations complete, we were ready to start leveling up this emissary flag in complete and utter stealth fashion. Without a mast sticking out over the horizon, chances of anyone finding us and our loot were pretty slim. Though as of right now, we didn't have any loot to speak of anyway. <sighs> second island, second woo. Okay, no captain, but okay. It's treasure at the end of the day. Our journey was devoid of skelly captains so far, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, so that chest would make for our first piece of treasure. And it would remain our only piece of treasure for a little while, because Rare was determined to make sure our plan of safely leveling up our emissary flag was not gonna be an easy one. After three island hops with no gold hoarder items worth a damn, I decided that we needed a bit of help. A conveniently located fortress would allow us to accumulate guaranteed loot, and I mean, if you don't have anything to show for yourself 20 minutes into your adventure, you were gonna take blessings wherever you can find them. Frankly, I figured that I was having really bad luck just finding skelly captains or other island adjacent loot without immediately getting swarmed by AI that refused to drop any items. Remember, dying was not an option because without a ship we could not respawn at our current location. Which means we needed more safe guaranteed treasure instead of relying on RNG. I headed towards a sunken vessel not too far away from Lone Cove, figuring that this would fare better than anything else I've done so far. And well, wouldn't you know it. Did I hear a crying chest? 
A chest of sorrows was pretty much the best item I could have asked for. If you remember my last robot adventure in which Brandon and I decided to take on a Ford of Fortune, you might recall that while crying chests are very dangerous to many vessels, they do absolutely nothing to a Rowy. But not only was this a no risk way of transporting a valuable item, this chest was also the key to us getting even more treasure. Now that we have a crying chest, we could sink a skelly ship, technically. I might want to do a campfire. If I want to be on a skelly ship, I'm gonna need overheal. And with that, we had a plan. Thankfully, skeletons are too stupid to bucket their own ships, meaning if we can get this thing on their vessel, it is going to sink in due time. Surviving until that happens is the challenge, hence me wanting to cook some food first. But clearly, this was where our journey took a turn for the better, because upon my return to Lone Cove, Rare had bestowed upon me another skelly captain. I now had two riddles for this island, and completing them would guarantee more gold hoarder loot. So the voices and I went to do exactly that. Lord knows I'd be lost trying to figure out these grade school level puzzles, wasn't it for the voices in my head telling me what to do? And even the progress itself contributed to our emissary flag. Last time I completed something like this, the resulting treasure wasn't exactly worth writing home about, but this one was actually pretty decent. Ooh. Okay, we got some good stuff. But of course, we can't have too many lucky things happen. To make sure I don't get too comfortable, Rare immediately summoned a gunpowder skeleton right next to my rowboat. Remember, these things can absolutely take damage, and if I lose it, there's no way for me to transport our loot. Loot which continued to impress me, given that they came as a result of just random skeleton orders and a message in the bottle. But we still had a skelly ship to sink, so it was time to prepare some food for that endeavor. Unfortunately, even something as simple as that wasn't guaranteed. I need more wood. I didn't know that. Oh, it's raining. Well, can I still cook? Nope. Two pieces of meat were all I was going to get, but the rain brought with it more things to worry about. I learned a little while ago that robots do indeed take damage from being in a storm, so I was now in a hurry to save my vessel before it was too late. A neighboring skelly fort will be our next base of operations, not only because it was not within the storm, but also because it housed a replacement rowboat. That was important because the skelly ship would continue to sail away even with me on board, and leaving a rowie that is stacked with loot somewhere on the ocean was definitely a bad idea. Armed with my chest, I left the loot at the skelly fort to go and hunt down the ship, hoping that nobody would see the glint from afar and take it away while I was gone. Even more problematic was the fact that it appeared as though the skelly ship began moving as I got closer with my rowboat. I wasn't sure if the presence of this tiny vessel kind of freaked it out, so the only logical course of action in my mind was abandoning it to get closer. And as such began my descent into madness as Rare dangled what I most desired in front of my very eyes. Bruh. <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> Please! Why are you going now? Oh my god, oh my god, they picked me up. Don't get keyholed. Come on. You'd assume the biggest problem was now solved, but far from it. The chest of sorrows already began crying as I boarded the ship, which was great, but there were also tons and tons of ever spawning skeletons on it ready to cut me into pieces. I couldn't risk taking a bunch of damage at once because respawning was obviously not an option for me. So I began running around the ship like a headless chicken attempting to find its noggin, hoping the chest would sink the skellies before I ran out of steam. We're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. Let's go. This might be rank five. Keep crying. Chest, I got this. You got this. No, 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 no. Wait, I can't be down here. I cannot be down here. The skellies began swarming me as the rising tides made it difficult to move. I needed to get out of there before these things block my way out because if I go down together with this ship, I'm gonna get black screen back to my ship, leaving all the treasure to sink. Jumping off was the only way to ensure my survival, and trust me when I say that, I, as well as the voices in my head, were very excited about successfully sinking this galley. Man, if only PvP was that easy, maybe I wouldn't need to resort to living on a rowboat. But alas, we had defeated our foe and its loot was ripe for the taking, except that what floated to the surface was not anywhere near the payout that I was hoping for. That's a little disappointing, kind of thought it was going to be more. Oh, we're barely not rank 5. Okay, well let's go back to our main ship. By which I meant our first rowboat. Luckily for me, the skelly ship had not drifted too far away from the fort that was housing my treasure, allowing me to get back pretty quickly. But sadly, this is where the good news ended. I'm not sure if somebody was messing with me or if this was a bug, but when I was getting ready to leave, I noticed that something was missing. Um, did I bring- I don't think- where are my supply crates? 
yep, my supplies had vanished. Mind you, all of my treasure was still there, but I had more ambitious goals for the day, none of which I could achieve without these crates. Obviously, I could replace the food simply by going back to a sea fort, but without the stack of firebombs that I bought at the outpost, I'd have an ice cube's chance in hell of defeating anything more dangerous than a single skelly ship. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches, so I went back to the fort to clear it once again, after which I finally upgraded my emissary flag to the maximum rank 5. It definitely felt like Rare was taunting me, spawning a world event right next to me, well knowing I couldn't safely tackle it without my bombs. Well, it is what it is, so we went back to the outpost, docked our row at the sovereigns, and began selling our loot with our upgraded emissary flag. But it wasn't until Rare decided to spawn a brand new vessel at this very outpost that I realized our journey was definitely over. With a measly 70,000 gold pieces earned in the span of a couple hours, I was definitely not gonna break any records. But hey, our ship was safely stashed away, we got to take advantage of a fully upgraded emissary flag, and nobody on the server paid us any mind as we stealthed our way across the sea. So it might not be the most efficient way to make money, but it's definitely one of the safest ones. And it can result in one heck of an adventure. If it's more adventures you are looking for, make sure you check out my video titled Journey to the Shores of Gold. A whole hour of uninterrupted shenanigans, including the appearances of a couple other Sea of Thieves creators that you guys might know. The card to which you can find on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea. And until next time, peace.